Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 46 of this Let's Play European of Silas IV as Lord Novgorod the Great. Now, as you may notice, the date is suspiciously on the 1st of January. Yeah, I quit and forgot to save. That happens when my brain is completely fried from having far too many recording sessions, as I had yesterday, and it's usually a, a fairly good indicator that I need to stop. Anyway, we have lost about four months, five months of gameplay, something like that, but it's not the end of the world. I mean, we are just fighting rebels currently and just kind of cycling through time very, very quickly. Uh, the last thing I did before I actually came back and saved this properly, um, just moved these two. Otherwise, we are just fighting the rebels currently. I've got another stack around here somewhere. Oh, you're down there. Might as well group you. All right. Cool. And we're about to take a loan. Not a problem. And then once these armies are dead, I mean, we're basically going to continue the plan that I had set in motion in the previous episode, which is going to be doing it a bit earlier. And that is we want to kill the large stacks of enemies and then we'll look into retaking the territory. Otherwise, we're just going to be fighting an uphill battle, trying to retake territory as we lose it. And yeah, that's not going to work. The good thing about the situation we are in right now is there are not actually that many more rebels due to fire thanks to the entire world basically already having triggered. So once we've defeated these guys, we should be in a fairly good spot to just continue. And we are just waiting for reinforcements to arrive there. Bohemia is helping me down there, thank you very much. Warmia just fell, good. Will we be able to beat that group? Hopefully. And you lot are ready for the attack here. I'm actually I'm going to group you and consolidate. In fact, I should have done a proper consolidate there, because I had way less infantry than I actually have in that army. And I could have brought out another 10 stack of mercenaries. Gain local autonomy for a local unrest or unrest? I'm going to take the unrest, because you're not very likely to actually fire. And tax is the least valuable right now. Right, we're beating the army in Galich really quite easily. This one is probably going to be a mite closer, though no, that one as well we defeated quite simply. Good. So let's get another shift consolidate. In fact, let's split out the infantry, consolidate, group you up, and I think we'll grab another 10 mercenaries here. Something along those lines is fine. And we need to start taking these back because this is where all the coring is happening, so let's shift you over here. We'll group our army together and then maybe we'll go after the 44, or maybe we'll wait until these guys can come down and support you. Uh, one army I do need to defeat is this one, although I can actually get rid of 20 units here, just by consolidating there. And what I'm actually going to do is create a template, 10 mercenary infantry, and just call it Merkinf just to stop having to keep clicking around. So you can just go Merkinf, except I can't afford it. Well, yes, I can. Oh, I can't actually get 10 mercenary infantry regiments. Great. Right, anyway, regardless, our plan is the same. So I'm just going to raise as many mercs as I can down here to support this army when it arrives. And yes, I am, in fact, out of mercenaries. Okay. So all of you lot march into there. Is that all of my armies? Yes, it is. Wow, I am really low on troops. <coughs> no wonder I'm paying so much in mercenary fees right now. Uh, no, we'll meet here. We'll have you meet us there as well. Okay. Is this going to be enough to take that group? If we do this, hopefully don't want Danzig to fall. Well, actually, it doesn't matter. I've westernized already. Why am I so worried about Danzig? I shouldn't be. Dali has internal conflicts. Well, good for Dali. Uh, speaking of which, actually, is the plutocratic coup causing us problems? Where is it? It's not going to tell me. Uh huh. It's going to take me a little while to... Doing that removes base tax and base... Oh, you bastards. I 
did not realize that was a thing. That is really expensive. Good grief. I might just leave them in power then. Whatever. We are a republic anyway. Oh, our general died in this fight. That's really annoying. Let's pull you back. Danzig just fell. We need a new leader here. Do another shift consolidate, but I'm just going to let you build up troops. In fact, might as well start you sieging stuff down. So you're going to be the small army. We'll have to move this army across to the other side to deal with that stack of rebels. And then we should be in a position to basically just uh, hunt down all these territories and deal with those. There's just one stack left, and that is you. So you can probably split some half of you over there. And we'll just start getting these forts back. Once we have the forts, they'll um, reclaim everything around them. It's just these areas that are outside of the forts reach are not being reclaimed automatically. Are you marching towards me? No, you're marching away. Okay, good. A bunch more cores are going to be done, so that will sort out more of our uh, rebel issues. Which will be good. Ah, oh, you bastards. Um, can I get away? No, I cannot. Do is have you sprint over there. Have you? Oh no! Finish your move to Vilna, and then sprint. We're actually doing a decent job of holding. Might actually hold until that lot arrives. Oh well done! In fact, you're going to win. Ha! Nice. I wasn't actually expecting it to go quite so well. Well done, well done indeed. Excellent. Okay, so you. Split and then split again. Big stack, you. Split. And then we just need to take the uh, forts. So we leave one unit here. One there. One there. One there. And stop because that won't be taken back automatically. And we'll send one over here. And we just have a, a round of sieging to do now. Economic organized construction. I don't have any more cores to do, do I? No. Build cost. I'm not going to be building anything for a while. Although having that one would be nice and having that one would be nice. So yes, we will advance this actually. One siege done. Let's keep moving you over. Are any of these in danger of firing? Crimea and Trebizond. So we need to do the ones down here. Like, soon. That's fine. We can just send the troops over to do that. Still on force march. You shouldn't be. You can stop force marching. Right. Let's make sure we get these back. No more rebels due to fire. Took another loan because we are still paying a small fortune for the mercenaries. Uh, we could probably reduce the number of mercenaries we have. Mm, no, I'm going to leave it as currently. Because I'm in a very, very weak position, so I don't want to kind of let other nations know just how weak we are. So we're going to maintain a large army, just in case. Although we do have good allies. Actually, speaking of allies. Didn't I break my alliance with you? I did. Why am I improving relations? I shouldn't be. Bohemia. Relations are being done. 
Likewise, Sweden we broke the alliance with, Mamluks we broke the alliance with. So we only actually have two allies right now, which isn't that good. Who else do I want to ally? Actually, or I could. They wouldn't be too bad, actually. And they're guaranteed by Bohemia, so Bohemia actually quite likes them. Any chance of an alliance? Yes, a very good chance, actually. Alright, let's improve a Tria. Brandenburg? No, rivals of Bohemia. Mantua? We saw how much of a fight you guys put up. Okay, so it would basically be Mantua or Tria. Tria is bigger, so we'll stay with Tria. Memmingen? Memmingen wouldn't actually be a bad shout, being the Emperor. And they, as well, wouldn't be totally averse to it. So we'll improve relations with them and see what happens. Uh huh. We get a bunch of money, which we need to pay off debts and things. Clergy gains loyalty, Berkers lose loyalty, Berkers lose influence. That's going to be useful, actually. Because I think I will try and get rid of this Berker coup. Means that all of my other estates are rather less potent than they otherwise could and should be. Let's just start sieging this stuff back as soon as possible. I have two armies there, I didn't even realise. One, two, three, four, five. Right. Group all of you. Detach. 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 And this is how you cover territory quickly when there's no enemy armies around and no forts to block you. Probably have doubled up in one or two spots, but not a huge deal. West Arabia is done. Good. Can we get through to here? We can. And then we're pretty much back in business. We'll turn off the forts that we can. Still three of them outstanding. And then we'll need to rebuild our armies after this. Another idea. This is military. We are a nice amount ahead of time in military. <coughs> Except this next technology level is actually very, very important. Oh, one other thing to point out. Um, I did comment that my armies still weren't fighting on par with the Western powers. That's because I still have Eastern technology on her soldiers. I don't think that's possible to switch to Western. So that is one thing that's changed, which is kind of against non-Western nations. So my cavalry are still going to be amazing compared to the Westerners, but my infantry will be kind of sucky. And now that I'm actually Western, I can have less cavalry, but I, I've always been under that limit anyway. So that's not that important. Uh, do I want the extra merchant? Yeah, I probably do, actually. We'll slowly get through these, and then I can get even more Republican tradition for even more monarch points. Right, so where do I want this merchant? Is the next pertinent question. You're already shifting all the money, so are you. Uh, Astrakhan is already shifting basically everything towards me, because you're just sending it up to there. Samarkand, or Persia. These are inland trade nodes. Do I have a merchant bonus for inland trade? I did as a merchant republic, but I don't anymore, I think. Oh, I have 25% less mercenary maintenance. I'd totally forgotten about that. So all the mercenaries I have are actually cheaper than they would be, and they're still costing me a small fortune. I mean, I could get rid of all the advisors. That would save me a lot. I, I think I'll probably just wait until they die off, because they're actually fairly cheap for how strong they are. Especially this guy. Hmm. What's the policy I can have? Unrest and vassal force limit contribution. 
pointless. So where do I want this merchant? Put in Krakow to start shifting money north. I do actually own a fair amount of Krakow now. I think I'm going to do that. And that should, at the end of the month, shift money north. There we are. Moving six more ducats into the Baltic, which is rather nice. Meaning that I'm going to be earning even more money there. Who's close? Trebizond. Where? Kaffa. Which is that one. So Kaffa I need to take back, like, as soon as is possible. And it's not a fort, so that shouldn't actually be too tough. And what I was actually going to do was that. Let's move you all over to there. Except for you two, you can go in there. How are you doing? You're doing good. Just take the Moscow back, lovely. Let's put you in position up there. Then I think I'll gather my armies and I will start reducing my mercenary footprint. Start getting a proper army again. Moscow could be turned off. And already I'm losing a lot less money. Is that just because of the amount of money I'm making through trade now? Whoa, that's gone up rather a lot. Marvellous. Trade is very valuable. And once I reduce my uh, army maintenance, in fact, I can do that already because I'm actually fighting, it's going to be even less. Excellent. And inflation reduction, yes, please. And I have the light ship cost as well. Crimea's done, Yaroslavl's done. As far as I'm aware, we now have no more rebel-occupied territories. Good. So what else do I need to do to get rid of the Burkas? need to lower their influence and I need to increase my instability. Well, stability is a little ways off. Burker influence will go down in three years. Okay. That's doable. We'll turn you off and we'll turn you off. Alright, let's get all of our armies together in, say, Moscow. I think I probably will just en masse them, um, remove the Mercenaries. And I'll just build new ones, new troops. So I will be somewhat short on troops, but I'm still going to have quite a few. My force limit's really decreased. Again, because of all the areas that were occupied by rebels, I have a lot of high autonomy now, probably. And that's just going to take a little while to burn down. Which is fine. It's totally normal. Group. Detach. Disband. Alright. This is... Wow, we only have five regiments of infantry left. Yeah, not good. Okay. So let's start actually rebuilding this army as it should be. Then we can start ordering in the troops that we'll need. Huh. So we do have about 10 years before the massive wave of rebels come in again. I'm rather hoping that we have an army up and about before that occurs. So are you the one with the infantry? Yes. So you're the one that I want to have completed first. So we're just going to fill you out where we can. We need a loan, but we are making money again. Which is positive. 
as our tax and production income will recover over time, as will actually our manpower income. And two more cores, and I think that is the end of our overextension problems. It is. Excellent. So, next thing I'm going to do is boost up stability. I'm going to do that before the next election, actually, because then my Republican tradition will have increased to its maximum extent. Just need one more regiment of infantry here. Boom. You are now at full strength. And I can start working on the next one. I do quite like that template actually. 1355 seems to work well for Russia. Could probably do with more artillery now. Maybe we'll increase the artillery later um, after we've rebuilt our, our standard armies. Brandenburg's declared war on Sweden. Yeah, Sweden's going to start collapsing now they're not allied with me. Trier would like an alliance. Good. Memmingen? Not yet. Was I actually improving relations with you? I was not. Well, I should be. Alright, Lithuania. We're not at war, so we can start threatening wars. Start expanding our reach a little bit again. I want Trakai. Build spy network there, please. I think I can probably stop improving relations with Tuscany. And start you working on someone like Gazimuk. There's no allies. <laughs> I could totally go after you, and I probably should. Or no guy. Military access from Trier. Sure. We're allied. Start building this army up, then. Recruitment time has been decreased by 10%. Cool. I guess. Are all my forts off? They are. I do have a lot of forts. It's just that they're all rubbish. These ones I could probably do with upgrading, because I can't really see myself expanding these two, really. I'm expanding this way, but I can see myself going through Germany, so... So I'm a little hesitant, because my front line is going to keep on moving. But if you're playing as like Denmark, and you have a, a fort here in Holstein, you'd probably just want to upgrade that to the maximum, just to hold Jutland. And bottlenecks, like Mantua is another good position, because it's right there in the middle of Italy. Buy ours, gain loyalty, or they lose loyalty and we get national unrest. I have some prestige to burn, that's fine. Conversion, good. Oh, reforms. Um, morale of armies and military tech. Diplo or both. Oh, I see. It's a lesser effect, but for both. Well, militarily. That lasts for five years, and I'm already, what, six years ahead of time? It's actually admin I would like the most. I might just reform them both, then. Or well, maybe military, just so I can get the admin points. We'll do the military, just the army. Extra morale is nice. Is this caravan? No, it's good, it's produced. Election. Okay, so the first thing I was going to do here was boostability. Burka influence is the only thing I'm missing now. Do I want to keep on re-electing this guy? He is a 666. He is ridiculously good. Yeah, I, I see no reason not to. I could really do with a diplomatic idea because I'm ahead of time in that. What should we go for? Trade? Increase the amount of money we're making? I mean, actually, trade steering and caravan power would be really potent for me, because I can just keep on shifting cash, like, over land, rather than by sea. Although I am very good at doing by sea, because my light ships are so cheap. So I should probably start trying to shift money here through the 
Mediterranean. Or I could go colono colonial, which is something I was very seriously thinking. You know what? I'm going to go colonial. Because why not? Get a colonist. Get the explorer. Set our policy to being native trading, just because I quite like that one. And once I break through no guy here, I can actually start colonizing this stuff. But that will mean breaking through no guy. And they have no allies. Arr! Why is that showing me those steps? Oh, it's a territorial core as opposed to a regular core. Gotcha. Yeah, I need to do something about those. In fact, what were these? Have I just been slacking here? Yes. <laughs> Simple answer. Whoops. Okay, I'm going to be spending a lot of admin. Don't think Baluchistan's worth doing, don't think you're worth doing. Uh, Crimea is. Circassia is not. Down here definitely is. Mazovia. Malopolska. But not will Kopolska. And that's going to give me a bunch more of these cores to make. Which is going to be costing me even more admin, of course, because everything costs admin. Ah, grumble, grumble, grumble. There's never enough admin in this game. They need to change that. They need to reduce coring costs just overall by about. Well. I'm going to guess the designers have a chart with monarch points gained, like average monarch points gained over time, and average monarch points spent over time. And they need to check that again for coring versus admin because of all the different costs against admin. It, I always find it's behind time, like always. And basically any other Let's Play I watch, it's, it's the same. You just cannot keep up. There is not enough monarch points around. And I'm careful, like I don't raise monarch points, sorry, I don't raise cores when I'm at war, for example, or um, when I have high war exhaustion. Arr, grumble, 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 grumble. The other thing I can do with that is estates. But I probably don't actually want to give out estates until we've got rid of the burkers. What are we still waiting for? Before that, oh yeah, we're just waiting for the influence to come down. Look, I'm getting 14 monarch points a month. 14! That's ridiculously high. In fact, that is the maximum that you can get. And I'm still way behind on admin. I shouldn't be. So how much my loan's going to cost me? I have six grand in loans, right? Yeah, more or less. 6,400. Not too shabby. <laughs> Okay, that's another full army. Let's start work on the next. <clears throat> of course, the bigger my army grows, the more it's going to be costing me in upkeeps. The, the, the slower I'll be paying off the uh, the loans. However, I'm still going to be increasing the amount of money I earn there. And actually, by having made all of this stuff states, I'm going to be making even more. And I can't believe I had not done that before, because I've actually owned that Nogaya territory for a time now. Okay, Gazamuk. Fabricate claim on Gnudzia. And then stop building the spy network, and then hopefully we can take it before it becomes occupied. And Nogai would be the next one that I want to start fabricating on. Oh, I also need to start annexing you. 
Prove relations. Memmingen. Do you want an alliance? Yeah, you do. I just need a guy to do it. 210. Alliance. Boom. Okay, we're back to full strength. Diplomatically. Yes, we are still one over because of uh, Livonians. No guy. Let's start spy networking you. Who's this? Lithuania. I want a fabrication on Trakai. Then I want to threaten them with war for Trakai. Before we do that though, I want... Oh, I was too late already. <laughs> it's gone. Kazimuk has been swallowed up by Armenia. Well, Lithuania, threaten war for Trakai. Oh, you won't. Two points. Really? Ah, humbug. Is Trakai really that valuable? No, oh, it is actually. Frankfurt and Pepper. Man, your allies are terrible. I should just be able to walk over you. How's the AE? Actually, AE is probably not going to be a problem. Because I've been burning it down for a while. Alright, we're going to continue raising... Sorry, fabricating on you with a mind to invade you and just take it. Likewise with no guy, so I need to continue building up my armies with that goal in mind. We're tenth militarily, second administrative, fourth diplomatic. How am I doing on naval force limit? Well over. Not really a surprise, though, I have to say. Anyway, that is it for this episode. So, sorry that this one was a bit of a an administrative one. I think things are going to start heating up again in the next one. We're definitely... Li Lithuania and Nagaya are on my list of places to conquer. Maybe Armenia. Maybe we'll start thinking about going after Brandenburg, though. They would be a rather more difficult nut to crack, I have to say. Um, possibly even Sweden going over the top of the Baltic, because that was another thing that I was thinking of doing. And, of course... We have colonial ambitions too, and actually I should have a look to see if I can... Oh, I can actually reach. Russia can into America. Um, do I want to? It's the next question. Yes, I'm going to take over Greenland. And I'm going to use that as a staging ground to kind of get into northern Canada. Is that all one region? No, Greenland's not actually in... I just thought it was. Huh. Well... Greenland's going to become Russia. <laughs> we basically own the Arctic. It's fine. It's ours. And then we'll probably come into the north of Canada up here. Is what I'm thinking. And then maybe down through the centre. Maybe. I don't know. Join me next episode and find out then. And the episodes after. If you're enjoying this, please do throw me a like and subscribe. They are very much appreciated. And they really do help this channel grow. If you are in. If you have any tips or advice for me, then please do leave a comment in the section below. I do try and read through that, and I try and read and respond to basically everything there. So, you know, get a few conversations going. It'd be cool. I'll catch you next time. Goodbye.